Hi, it's me, David, and I'd like to welcome you back to Life with Parkinson's. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I was diagnosed with young onset Parkinson's disease at age 44, while I was still working full time. It was a bit of a challenge, and a little while ago, I got a question from a viewer who was asking me just basically about, you know, they've, they've been diagnosed with young onset Parkinson's disease also, which basically just means you were under 50 years old when you got the diagnosis. But for me, it's basically in interchangeable. I just call it Parkinson's disease now because to me, I don't really see any difference. This viewer was at the point now with their career that they were starting to find it challenging, which was similar to my experience as well. For the first couple of years after diagnosis, I was still okay working full time at my job and I didn't have a lot of modifications, but after the second year, it began to become quite a bit more of a struggle. So with this episode, we're just going to basically talk about getting your diagnosis, continuing to work full time, and then you've had your diagnosis, but you've been working with your diagnosis for a certain number of years. You're kind of starting to hit the wall with your career. It's, be it's becoming more challenging. And you get to the question of what do I do? Well, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to share from my perspective and outline it from the steps that I took. But I think it's very common from what I've seen on Facebook and what I've read about, I think it's very common that we all kind of experience a general similarity in what we go through. We, we all get our diagnosis and for those of us that don't really have a choice about continuing to work because, hey, the bills don't care. They just keep coming. They don't care about our chronic illness. They don't care about our Parkinson's disease. They want to get paid on the same day every month all the time. We've got to keep working. A quick update before we get really into this. Next week I go for my Movapo pen appointment and I've had a lot of anxiety the last week because of it. Basically because I'm concerned about the side effects that a dopamine agonist can cause. So I've been working through that, which has given me more time to rewrite this episode a few times so I don't mind, but I just wasn't in a place where I could think clearly and I think all of you can understand that. When you can't really think clearly because something is weighing down on you so much, it's hard to really concentrate very well. But last night I got to the gym and I had a really good workout, so I'm proud of that and I'm happy with that. And I feel a lot better because of it. It's a four to six hour appointment and they're going to try and figure out my injectable dose. And I've got to go to the appointment when I'm off in the morning. So I know it's going to be a long day, so I'm having a bit of anxiety over that because when I'm off and I'm having a bad off, it's hard to walk. So it should be fun. Okay, so like I said before, basically when I look at it, and I've, I do follow the comments a lot on Facebook, I don't post a lot, I just pop in and read things from time to time. And from what I see on Facebook, the two main situations I see is that when you get your diagnosis, it, you know, it creates a big disturbance in your life, and possibly your employment, there could be things like modifications or slight job changes. I think for the most part, People know there was something wrong with them and then getting that diagnosis of YOPD or Parkinson's is kind of a relief so at least they know what it is. Despite all the hurt and sorrow and possibly anger that you get with that diagnosis, I think most of us find a way through and we're able to adjust and get back to work. We're basically in that honeymoon period when we're trying to figure out that what, you know, what the disease means, how it's going to change our life and how we're going to make adjustments for it. And then the other main situation is now you've been working for whatever number of years. Some people are able to work for, you know, 10 or 15, possibly even longer, depending on the progression of their disease or their symptom set. So that main, mainly that second situation is where you're, you're starting to hit the wall and things are getting hard. People are noticing, possibly saying things behind your back or to you. My work situation was thankfully very supportive. <laughs> Going back to the first situation, basically happened for me was I got the diagnosis and it was a huge shock because I thought, well, all of us at work noticed that, hey, Dave's slowing down, Dave's having problems, and I was having other, other problems as well, emotional problems, because Parkinson's was just basically hitting me that way, where stress was becoming very hard to deal with, like situations where I had to make like a snap decision, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, it was like, whoa, where? So yeah, you know, stress was extremely hard for me to deal with. I continued to work three years at my company and I was part owner of the company so you know, getting modifications in my job were very easy but you know, there comes a certain point for me anyhow where it was, you know, well, what can I do to modify my duties anymore? Stay at home? 
and that wasn't really an option. So yeah, I was in a very supportive work environment and, and for those of you that are in tough situations, I feel for you. You know, you, you could possibly have a mortgage, a car payment, you could still be raising like, young kids at home. You do whatever you can to get through. If you're anything like me, you are, you're living paycheck to paycheck, I understand. If you're finding this information helpful and useful, I ask that you hit the like button. That is the best way for this video to spread to more people who are looking for it. Thank you. So for, this dis for this discussion, I think the second situation is, is the one we've talked the least about. What do you do when you hit the wall with YOPD? What do you do when you hit that wall? So well, what happened for me was basically I was encouraged to take a personal assessment. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Kind of like a pros and cons list. Write down what you think you can do. Write down what you think you can't do. And then basically I need to get out of this career because I'm struggling with it and get into this career, which the career I looked at was sales. Like I thought I was a good salesperson because when I showed up in my garage door van, I was considered an authority in the business, right? I had built myself up over the last 10 to 14 years as, a, as an expert in my field. So I didn't realize at the time when they called the company and I was dispatched to the job site to do the sales call, the sale was already 80% done. Because if they're calling us, they're calling, well, we were, we were basically set up as the company that like we didn't do the cheap doors, we did the high quality work. We did high quality residential work and high quality commercial work. So yeah, I didn't realize that when I was dispatched for a sales call, by the time I got there, the sale was probably nearly done. And when I got into the used car business and thought, hey, I'll just take my transferable skills and apply them to this set. I was wrong. Selling a car is a lot different than selling a garage door. Yeah, so that's what I did. I took a personal assessment. I went to Work BC, saw them. I didn't actually, I couldn't see anybody, but I registered through Work BC and did a personal assessment, did some online seminars, and found a lot of helpful information. I had never written a resume for like over 20 years, so I learned how to write a resume and they helped me get into my new job. That's what I did. And the thing that I found was that it was really hard to make this decision on my own. I think that to make such a life-changing decision, like when you've been at a career for 10, 15, 20, even 30 years, like it's not just easy to step right out of it. You've got to learn a whole new set of skills, I found, and a whole new industry. And I think you need a lot of input from people because you're basically going somewhere that you never went before. I liken it to almost like graduating from high school again. You're like graduating from high school a second time and the whole world is basically your apple, right? Well, except for the career that you're in. But of course, when you graduate from high school, the educational community tries to encourage you to go on to college, which isn't a bad idea. But when you're switching from a career because of a chronic illness, I think our focus is to try to make our next job a little easier, which was my main focus. I tried to cut down on commuting time, I tried to cut down on, on ladders because the garage door industry was is basically focused around ladders and Parkinson's and ladders don't mix because of the balance issue. So yeah, I got a lot of advice on what to do. There was a lot of discussion. I was living at my in-laws at the time and that's how we landed at the used car sales. Kind of ironic because is selling a garage door different than selling a used car? And let me tell you, it is different. You know, but I stayed on with the used car dealership for as long as I could and now I just work the one day a week and they're really good to me so I'm happy to do that. What happened when I was there was that the drive was getting to me. The drive would tire me out. I didn't realize at the time that driving in Parkinson's is a very difficult thing to do. It tired me so, out so much that when I got home I couldn't exercise anymore. I would just basically fall onto the couch and that made my symptoms even worse because I started to lose a lot of muscle mass and I started to lose a lot of fitness. I didn't realize that the driving would become so hard. And the other thing that got to me was the heat, right? I live in the Okanagan, so being outside in the summertime when you have, yeah, the heat is extremely hard to deal with. It just basically knocks the medication right out. Now for me, I didn't understand all the implications of my illness at the time that I selected this career. For those of you looking at a different career, I think there's a lot of things that you gotta consider. Environment, like temperature. If you're commuting, is driving gonna give you a problem? Are you switching into a career that you don't really understand very well? You probably need to do more research than I did. And think about the symptoms that you're having now. Are the symptoms that you're having now, are they going to bother you in the new career that you're starting? So the next obvious thing to think about would be your financial situation. You know, do you need to talk to a financial planner? 
Is there medical coverage? Is there disability benefits that you can possibly take? And I guess for me, I wanted to continue to work. You know, from what was explained to me at the beginning of my diagnosis was Parkinson's is a progressive disease. It progresses extremely slowly. And if you exercise and take your medication and do a, do a certain number of things, it won't be a problem for a long time. But what I didn't realize, and I didn't understand at the time when I was switching careers, was that I had already been experiencing Parkinson's symptoms for 8 to 10 years before my diagnosis. You know, that's how far back we, we were able to trace it. So yeah, I'd already been experiencing it for 8 to 10 years before my diagnosis, and then I put another 3 years on top of that after my diagnosis, so that's possibly 10 to 13 years. So yeah, I'd already had it for a long time. If you're expecting to keep working after your diagnosis for 10 to 15 years, just remember that you could have possibly already had the disease a long time before that. So that's basically how my situation unfolded and the events that I went through. I hope that this video has been helpful and if there's something that you think I've missed, hey, please let me know in the comments below. Perhaps we can get a good discussion going about it. I find that if I've missed something in the video, people tell me in the comments. And I think that's great because then the discussion gets carried to a whole new level. Thank you for watching and supporting this channel. I just want to let you know I appreciate every one of you that takes the time to tune in. I hope we can take this journey together. Thank you. Have a good day. Goodbye.